Sup? <laughs> oh, I just wanted to say real quick while I'm drinking this shot that I made this Gmail address just for this talk. So, you know, if you're going to try and hack my Gmail, there's nothing good in there except things that you guys email me. And go ahead, you can contact me if you want. I'll drink. Okay, so what's up? Uh, the name of my talk is Ripping Media Off the Wire, and it's a step-by-step -step guide. If uh, you guys have all the tools and installed on your laptop, you can actually just follow along and try and do this right now. Otherwise, you know, if you miss something, then my slides will be available online. You can follow along then if you, like, forget or something. All right, so let's get started. First of all, who the, who the hell am I? <laughs> I'm Honey. Um, these are my... I got credentials here. I'm a network administrator. I've been for four years, and I'm also a professor at John Jay College, an adjunct professor. That's in New York City, in case you didn't hear my accent already. Um, I'm also a research assistant for um, a ballistic research grant, and um, I'm about to study uh, forensic computing masses in the fall. And. Yeah, I got a CIS and electronic engineering, computer networking. All right, I guess I got some skills. I got some. I got some skills. So. There you go. That's who I am. What's the scope of this talk? This talk is gonna uh, walk you through how to download uh, MP3s from MySpace and from YouTube, and we're also gonna talk about the lack of security in protected streaming. All right, so the tools that I use for this, they're all GNU tools. WGET, Firefox, um, an add-on for Firefox called HTTP Fox, which is awesome. Um, RTMP dump, and this uh, converter that I've used, there's other converters, but this one's called Convert Flu, I mean, um, FLV to MP3s. Now, um, there's, DM, there's DMCAs right now on the RTMP dump, and also when I originally wrote the white paper for this, um, like convert FLV to MP3, there was a website you could download it. It's gone. The website is is gone. So, um, you know, I just suspect that there's a DMC takedown on that as well. But you guys are hackers. I'm sure you can find the tools. So, uh, just a disclosure <laughs> about this talk. Um, because uh, this presentation describes methods to download protected materials. And I'm doing this talk in an effort to raise, you know, the lack of security and protected streaming. Um, all the music that I'm using in my presentation, I actually got permission from the artists themselves. So that was pretty cool. And um, any illegal use of the methods by, you know, any of you guys, like, I'm not responsible for that. And a legal statement. Um, this presentation does break the terms of service for YouTube, MySpace, the, di the Digital Millennium Mags, and, um, but that's only if you, um, if you download copyrighted materials. You know, n and not everything on YouTube is copyrighted. If somebody has a video of their dog rolling over and over, you know, that's, not, that's not protected. So if you decide to download you know, Jay-Z's you know, protected media, well, then you're breaking the law. Okay. Uh, before we begin, um, there's a couple of, I don't know, questions that I just want to, like, answer ahead of time. Some people are like, what is the point of this? I use LimeWare. What is the point of this? I, I have a Usenet account. Or what is the point of this? I use, you know, different um, converters. But there's a couple good points about why this is interesting. Um, like, the third-party plugins, they're not always reliable or kept up to date on changes, okay? So, like, Grease Monkey, I think their last update was, like, in April. All right, so if MySpace or YouTube, if they change their implementation, you know, on, um, on their servers, then, like, uh, you know, you have to wait for that plugin to be updated in order to use, you know, use the plugin. They're not always updated that fast. Um, for people who, like, use online websites in order to um, convert stuff, like, how do you know that, you know, that third party is not injecting stuff into your MP3s or media? You're trusting someone else. Um, and, you know, on LimeWire, like, do you have an MD5 sum on, like, the MP3? No, you don't, because you're obviously, like, pirating it 
so you don't have the MP3 already to check. So, And um, this presentation is not intended to encourage piracy, even though I'm talking about it. But it's more about the uh, um, decimation of data that is supposed to be, you know, protected streaming, and it's not really protected, so. All right, so let's just get some um, definitions out the way. MySpace uses um, the RTMP protocol, so what is that? Well, actually, they're using RTMPE protocol, but what is that? It's the real-time messaging protocol. It's a proprietary protocol by Adobe. Um, there's three variations of RTMP. RTMP itself, which uh, runs over port 1935, RTMP uh, T, which is used to traverse firewalls, and RTMP S, which uses uh, SSL. Now, the protocol that we're interested in for MySpace, RTMP E, which is the encrypted real time messaging protocol, and it's a proprietary protocol of Macromedia um, for streaming video and DRM. It supposedly allows secure transfer of data without SSL. And the, the reason why they implemented this is, you know, SSL is slow, um, but RTMPE is supposed to solve that problem. It's supposed to be more easy to implement. Okay, so um, I went to Adobe's website and I just took a, a couple of clips that they, they have available on their website. Because basically, Adobe is recommending everyone to use RTMPE, and they're saying, you know, that it's providing protection from stream ripping which my demonstration is going to show it, it isn't. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm embarrassed for them. You know. This is also from uh, Adobe's website, um, where they're talking about, you know, they're, they're recommending RTMPE more. And they're saying it's robust. Okay. And uh, the client picture there, you know, we have the server, and it's uh, you know talking to the client, and then you know then it's like playing it in um, in the client's player. But like uh, the tool that we're going to use, which is RTMP dump, RTMP dump basically acts like a proxy. It sits in between, you know, it captures all these requests from um, you know the servers, and it um, it, it, it like. It um, does the handshaking between uh, you know the servers and the client, and then it compiles the whole file, and then it passes the file down to the client. So that's what I'm talking about. Well, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's see what RTMP does. RTMP dump does. Um, this is from the man of RTMP dump. So this is an ACP server that accepts requests that uh, consist of RTMP dump parameters. It, uh, it then, you know, does the handshaking, and then it passes the file down to the client. And this is also just from Adobe's website, them talking about DRM. So they're describing DRM there, that it's two elements, encryption and access control. Okay, <laughs> now that we've uh, got like the definitions out the way, let's just see how to do this. Okay, so um, first, how to get MP3 files from MySpace. The first step is you have to install um, HTTP, um, HTTP Fox, the Firefox plugin, you use Firefox. And the, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start HTTP Fox, and then you're gonna browse to your MySpace page. So for my example, um, you know, this band that gave me like the consent to use their stuff, it's a local Brooklyn band. They're like not that well known. So they're more than happy to give me, you know, consent to have more publicity for their music. So you can see at the bottom, HTTP is started, it's capturing uh, traffic there at the bottom. And you can see, uh, you know, I'm playing music there. All right, the next step is you have to traverse all this uh, captured traffic. So I tried to find um, something unique about the, the URL that I captured so that you can always find it. So the unique thing, uh, string that I found was just if you search for get song, then it'll just return one URL. And the get song is case sensitive. Um, 
Um, the next thing you have to do is in ATP Fox at the bottom, there's a couple different options. So the one option is content. And if you browse through the XML file, you'll see you know, a path for an MP3. So you copy that MP3 path. And please notice that um, it's proceeding, it's RTMP, and then the URL, you know, dot MP3. Just notice that for a second. Okay, so the next thing you have to do is download RTMP dump if you don't have it already. And here's the fun part. So they're, they're kind of tricky. It, it looks like it's RTMP, but it's not really RTMP, it's RTMPE. So if you just change uh, the URL to RTMPE and then run that command in RTMP dump, you're going to download the file. So that's the syntax down there for um, RTMP uh, dump. It's the executable minus R because you're uh, downloading like an RTMP stream. The only other option I think for RTMP dump is um, minus host. Um, then the modified captured URL and then the output of you know, your, flu, your flu name. I mean your FLV name. Okay, so um, here's my modified URL. You remember before I said notice in the URL that I copied, it said RTMP. I changed it here to RTMPE. I don't know if you could see it that well, but I have it highlighted in red. So now when I execute this command, um, it's gonna download the file. Anyone notice anything weird right here? Do you remember like the URL that we copied? Any, any hackers notice anything weird? I'll let you think on that for a second. All right, so I run the command and it starts downloading. Yay! And then now my download has completed. Um, now, okay, so this is what you could have noticed, is that the URL that I copied from HTTP Fox, the RTMP uh, URL, was a .mp3, right? So why is my output an, an FLV? Why am I doing that? You hackers could have noticed that. Like, why don't I just download it as an MP3? The reason why you don't download it as an MP3 is because when you do download it as an MP3, the, the sound quality is really bad. So if you use this converter to convert, um, if you download it as a FLV and then convert it to this, the sound quality is perfect. So I use this converter, convert it, and now I have my file. So do you want to see that? In a video? Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> There's no porn, sorry. All right, so I'm just Googling for their MySpace page, started um, HTTP Fox, started HTTP Fox, now I'm gonna browse to their MySpace page. Now you can see all the traffic's coming through, it's a lot of traffic, every single icon and thing that's on the page. Now I'm gonna start the song playing. Now I have to, find the URL and all of this traffic. So I'm going to do a search for Get Song, but remember it's case sensitive. Now I'm clicking on the content tab so I can go through the XML file. Look, they're running uh, Microsoft IIS 6. All right, I'm copying the URL. All right, so someone asked me, they're like, why can't you W get the file if you have the URL? So I've just I do what you shouldn't do here. You can't WGET RTMP streams. So, 
I'm going to show you that. You can see what I went through, basically, to try and figure this out. <laughs> I tried all many different options. So I'm W getting it. I forgot to put the file name in. Folks, my name's Cal. I'm uh, one of the senior staff goons here. Um, perhaps earlier today you heard an announcement from Priest about humans that have been, or, or conference attendees that have been going into Katie's and doing a dine and dash. And um, in one case, some folks rang up a bill of over 100 bucks and then took off without paying. And it's happened multiple times, and, and uh, we like this hotel so far, and, and uh, we want to keep coming back. So what we'd like to do is pass the hat. If you've got a buck or two, um, we've got a couple other senior staff goons that are going to help um, collect uh, a couple bucks, and then whatever's left over that has it, um, that covers the damage goes to the EFF. Okay, I'm going to start. Sorry, it restarted, so we're just going to have to watch this again for a second. It's not that loud. Oh yeah, so this band Great Tiger, they, um, originally their music was only available on MySpace, and you know I tried the easiest thing to get their music, which is just like, ask them for it, and I tried, actually my friend Ronan tried too, we tried to social them to give us all their music, but they wouldn't give it to us, so we had to find alternative ways. Actually, they, they actually gave me a CD after this, but yeah. This works for this, I mean, yes, you can. <laughs> Maybe they'll fix it. All right, so this is pretty much where I left off before that guy talked. So I'm just saying, you know, it's going to fail because I'm, I'm W getting RTMP stream. That doesn't work. So there's the failure right there. It's not a supported scheme. So then uh, the next thing that I'm going to try and do is I'm going to just try and use RTMP dump and just download the MP3 without modifying the URL. What happens then? That's just uh, me saying exactly what I just said, actually. <laughs> oh, no, that's my test MP3. I'm actually going to show you, too. I'm going to download it as an MP3, and I'm going to play it, and you, hopefully you can hear that the quality is, is not very good, and that's why I use the converter, so that it's, it sounds good. OK, so we're going to expect that this is going to fail, because I haven't modified the URL. and it failed. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to uh, modify the 
the URL to include RTMPE, and it's gonna work. There we go. Yay. All right, so now you can see the file size there. It's downloaded successfully. But it's an MP3, and like I said, it, uh, it doesn't sound very good. Sounds choppy. You can go to my Q&A. So now I'm going to uh, run the same command again, except I'm going to download it as, as an FLV. Download successful. And look, the file size is exactly the same, even though it's a different format. And now I'm going to use the converter to convert it from an FLV back to an MP3. Successful. All right, now let's see if you can hear the difference in the sound quality. I'm not done. I'm not done. Sorry. You got to keep sitting here. But um, also, so now I'm looking at the file sizes of the two different files, and you can see that when it's converted with the convert um, FLV to MP3, you know, it, it adds to the file size, it get, like repairs it. So. <laughs> Mouse dancing. <laughs> Our, that was our uh, video intermission. So now we'll continue with the next part, which is uh, from YouTube. Okay, so uh, how to get MP3 files from YouTube. Um, this is just like URL manipulation. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to install Firefox if you don't already have it. You're going to install HTTP Fox if you don't already have it. You're going to start HTTP Fox and you're going to browse to the YouTube page that you want to extract media from. 
So for my example, again, I'm using uh, Great Tiger, the Brooklyn band. Um, I'm using one of their videos. So um, this, this shot, you can see there's traffic already captured there at the bottom. And instead of doing a, a, a search for get song, you can just do a search for get in order to traverse all the amount of traffic that you are capturing. Um, get only returns one URL unless like you browse multiple YouTube pages. So you're just going to copy that URL. And the next step is download wget if you don't have wget for some reason. And we're going to modify the URL. So there's, um, there's parameters within the URL that are extra that you don't need in order to try and wget the file. And actually, if you don't modify the URL and remove some of the extra parameters, well, they're not, they're not extra, but the parameters that you captured, when you try and convert it, it won't convert properly. So there I have the syntax of what you need to put into wget. wget minus open you know, your file name, that flv, and then the, uh, the captured URL. So uh, here's the unedited unedited version of the URL. You, uh, the URL. You can see there's a whole bunch of parameters there. Um, the web page and a bunch of different parameters. There's the URL again. So um, I broke down each of the different parameters. So um, you have to, uh, there's get video, and then there's a detail page, there's T, and some string of characters. It's 43. Um, characters actually. Um, and then there's the FMT that has to do with like a resolution. And then there's the video ID, which is like the actual video ID. Um, then there's no flu and SFV. So um, and when you um, copy the URL, all of these parameters come out of order a lot of times. So you actually, you know, you have to be able to identify uh, that there's different parameters there. They don't always come in the order in the example URL. They come all out of order, with the exception of uh, the get video one. So let me just talk for a second here. So <laughs> originally when I did this white paper like a month ago, you only needed three um, parameters. You only needed the get video, which you're always going to need. You needed the, the T and the 43 characters. And then the video ID. You didn't need the SFV, but um, you know I keep uh, I, I kept trying my own presentation to make sure it still worked. And the guys at YouTube they changed it Tuesday. <laughs> All right, so Tuesday I was like, oh my god, it doesn't work anymore. So I had to rehack it, and I figured out that you just uh, you just need this other parameter too, and then you can download it. So that's what I was talking about before, where like uh, you know Grease Monkey or something like like that. They changed it, so I don't know if you know, the, the other add-ons, if they're still going to work, they're going to have to go update it, re, you know, put out the add-on that's going to uh, successfully work. But if you break out and understand these parameters and they're just like including them or not including some of them, you can just hack it all on your own. Okay, so I have my example URL and now I have my modified URL at the bottom. And I'm just W getting, you know, this modified URL. So there, I'm putting the commands into, um, you know, with wget, with my modified URL, I'm executing it, and my download's complete. And now I'm going to convert it to an MP3 if I want it to be an MP3 file. And let's see a video of all of that and like uh, some of the things that don't work in it in my other video. So. Okay, so I'm just going to YouTube, and I'm going to search for um, Great Tiger's video, because it's really short for this demonstration. I'm going to start HTTP Fox.
And then I'm gonna go to the video page. All right, so that was interesting. Now we have to uh, traverse all the captured data to try and find our one URL, because you know that video is priceless. <laughs> Apache. So first I'm going to try the URL without editing any of the parameters. And you can see how it fails. I'm saying this should fail because I'm not going to edit the URL. I'm just going to try and straight wget it from YouTube. So, you know, file size is zero. That didn't work. So now I'm going to remove some of the parameters. So I need t equals some string. I need get video. I need the video ID. And then now, just recently, I need that ASV. No, it is not always ASV equals three. Sometimes it's ASV equals two. It doesn't. It doesn't matter though. Like uh, you still have to include it, regardless of the number. Yay! So now I'm going to convert it into an MP3 so I can listen to it on my portable media device. Hey, successful. All right, so if you, if you don't convert it to an MP3, if you open the FLV file in um, Winamp and also like VLC, please, if you rename it to an AVI file, it also plays, so, well, within at least those two media players. That was our second intermission. <laughs> All right, so the, the conclusion about this. Um, DRM implementations, they're almost always going to fail without some type of special hardware on the client computer. Um, you know, Adobe, they should fix their protocol instead of doing DMCA takedowns on tools, you know, that are capturing the streaming and stuff like that. You know, the, and they're recommending the RTMPE protocol uh, over the SSL, and they're you know saying it's robust and everyone should be using that, and you know it doesn't it doesn't protect against uh, stream ripping. Um, the RTMPE protocol, well, its implementation on MySpace totally security through obscurity. All right, I added the E and I can download stuff. All right, that's not that's not real security. And uh, it's susceptible to man in the middle attacks. Um, there's references and downloads. Oh. All right, so that's so that's uh, my talk. 
Um, do you guys want to do like a, a revisit on a, like a back in the day hack? It's kind of random, but um, all right. I'm actually just curious if like anyone knows about this. All right, in a second, chill. I mean, it's really kind of like a story, but. Sorry, one second, I forgot I set up a proxy on my Firefox, I'm just disabling it real quick. Okay, so um, does anyone remember the uh, original like Sega console? Where's, image? Where's images? I can't really see. Is it here? Did I did I mistype it? No, the original Sega, let me see. Thank you. All right, so I'm talking about this one. All right, did anyone else have this, like when they were a kid? Yeah, wait, raise your hands, for real. Like, show me love. Yes, yes. All right, so when I was a kid, um, I figured out that like if you didn't put a game in the console and like you hit a bunch of different buttons on the, you know, uh, on the remote, it would take you into uh, um, an Easter egg that was in the Sega console. <laughs> so I, I love this game. I was like obsessed with this game. I played it all the time. And um, it has really stupid music in it. Um, I'm, and um, I actually, I found the game. Someone, someone uh, put it, you know, used an emulator and they put it online, which I was like ecstatic about because I don't still have the Sega console, and like I was very disappointed that you know I didn't keep you know get to play the game. So I found it online and I actually ripped the MP3 file out of um, you know just it being online, and I gave that MP3 to Great Tiger and I'm like trying to get them to sample the stupid music that's in you know, this game. And I tried to explain to them that, like, no, you can use it. It's from, like, an Easter egg. You know, the music's from, like, an Easter egg game in, like, the original Sega console from, like, the 80s. Like, no one's going to know. But they don't, uh, they, they don't trust me about that. I'm still waiting for them to sample it. But um, let me see if I can find the game real quick for you because it's just funny.
All right, so look at this. It's, it's awesome. Yes. <laughs> I can't see to play it, but... The music sounds just like Red Tiger, right? So there's a time, and there's like 13 rounds to it. Which I, I can't play because I can't see, but I'm actually really good at this game. So when you finally beat the 13th level on the game, you get the email address of the programmer. <laughs> so you know I email them like, oh my god, thank you, I love this game. I'm so happy that you have it online. You replied too, it was awesome. You know, it's like a complete story. He's like, oh, I'm very glad that you like the game. Not a lot of people have beat the game, so. All right, so that's it, I'm done.